This is then connected to a locality form, um, and you can see that you have your locality name, a string of your geography coming from your tree, your lats and longs, all of your details, etc., etc. And then you can see that both Geolocate and Google Earth are, are implemented into the locality form itself. So what, if, once you have a geography and a locality name inserted on this form, this button will become active, and you can click on that, and it'll go out and it'll georeference that particular record for you, and you can accept it or skip it or do whatever you want to do. By the same token, once you have a latitude and longitude in there, the Google Earth button will become available, and then you can visualize that particular item in Google Earth directly from here, this particular record will be visible in Google Earth so that you can check your Latin long, make sure it's in the right place, etc., etc. Then the preparation table, you can see here it's being displayed as a grid. In fishes, we have multiple preparations for a single specimen, and so it's easier to visualize them in a grid view. But you can display this in a grid view, you can display it in a, in a button, you can display it any, any any multitude of ways that you want to, based on um, you know what the piece of information is and how you want it to be displayed. So here's your preparation form, which gives you an indication of what preparation it is, how many, how many there are, who it was prepared by, etc., etc., etc. And you'll notice that all of these, all of these major forms have an attachment button. That's where you would attach images, attach PDFs, attach all of those sorts of things. Um, you can literally go and click the button and attach any any file that you can store in a system. You can attach to that. So be it a PDF of the of the publication of the species, be it an image of the specimen in the field be it an image of where you collected the specimen, so an actual image of the river, and you can connect it up at any level, collection object, collecting event, locality, geography, wherever it may be, you can connect, connect up all these different files. This is your taxonomic tree. So this is basically the taxonomic authority that, that runs all of your taxonomic system behind the scenes. It's very much like a tree structure. You can navigate through it. You can do a find at the bottom and find a particular item in the tree and find next and do all of those sorts of things. Um, there's a numbering system on every node on the tree so that you can get an indication of how many collection objects are associated with that particular node. And by right clicking on the node, you can get a very, you can go to those collection objects and see them physically in the system. Um, there's all sorts of funky things that you can do with this tree. Um, you can add new nodes directly in the tree. If you want to add a global node for, for any material, you can go in and click on the parent and add a child underneath it. Um, you can synonymize things by dragging and dropping them. You can move records from one place to another. So if somebody's put a genus in the wrong family, you can go and move it to the correct family and it'll affect all the specimens that are attached to that particular record. You can synonymize old names with new names so that if somebody puts in an old name, it'll give them a prompt for the new name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so very, very powerful. One of the other things that you can do is you can split the tree. Um, in certain circumstances when you're trying to drag one node from one place in the tree to another place and they're very disparate distances away from each other, it can get very difficult trying to drag it up and down. So now what you can do is you can split the tree and you can navigate to two different portions in the tree and then grab a node from here and drag it onto here to be able to drag and drop things effectively between different nodes in the tree. As I said, the geography um, is now in a tree much the same way. You can see the numbering system is the same. You can go in and you can look at the collection objects that are associated with that particular geography. You can now synonymize names and move names around and rename things on a global basis. So if you don't want all of your specimens to say USA, you can go and change that node to United States of America and it'll change your entire collection to United States of America in one go. Um, very, very effective tool in terms of, it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of doing global type, type things. Um, and being able to use the same sort of tools in the taxonomy tree in terms of synonymizing entries so you can look at an old name for a place and a new name, etc., etc. We also have trees for all of the paleo stuff. Um, I can never remember what they are. There's a stratigraphic tree and a lithostratigraphic tree or something. Um, and you can go in and you can see all of the, I'm sure this is not correct, but um, and if ever you collect extraterrestrial stuff, you may want to change the notes at the beginning. Um, but essentially, you can go and do exactly the same same thing. So you can synonymize names in your in your tree so that you have an old name for a strata that opposed to a new name. You can move things around. You can rename them. You can add nodes. All of those, all of that sort of functionality is there. And then each of these trees, sorry, this isn't very visible, but each of these trees has a definition file that runs behind the scenes. So essentially, you can go in and you can decide which of these ranks you want to include in your tree. So you can delete all the ranks that you don't want. If you want to start at order and you don't want any of this upper level stuff, you can just go and delete them out. And then they won't appear in your tree. 
you can also decide which of these ranks you want to appear in your full name. So for botanical co collections, you would have genus, species, subspecies, rank, forma, whatever it is that you guys use further down than we use. If you have a fish collection, you just go down to sub subspecies, and you can determine which of those ranks you want to use to build your full name string um, that it uses to, to create your names. You can also decide which of these ranks you want to be enforced. So if you want, if you want people to be able to you know, add a kingdom, but then skip all of this stuff and then add an order, you would just say, yes, this rank's enforced, none of these are enforced, but this one is. And so you can decide exactly which ranks you want people to, to, to have to include into the tree in order to build that, that tree structure. The reporting system is much the same as it was in 5. Um, it's an external piece of software that we're using called iReports. In 5 it was Rave. Um, it's a system called iReports. Essentially what it does is it just takes a query in your database and links that query up to a report in iReports. And then once you've built that query, all of the fields in that query would be available down here. And then you can just literally grab those fields and drag them onto the label that you want to create and put them in the right place and change the font and all those sorts of things. It handles eight different kinds of barcodes, it handles images, it handles pie charts, it, it, literally the world is your oyster. And you can go and design exactly the way that you want your label to run. And then when you go back into specify, there will be a little label button on the, on the left hand side. And you can just drag and drop stuff onto the label thing to create your labels or your loan forms or whatever it may be. Again, this is another service that we will provide. If you can provide us with a hard copy of what your label or your loan form looks like, we can go in and we can create them for you and then ship them back to you. Again, it's just a resource that you would import into your system and you'd be up and away and ready to go. This is a, a, more, a more complex report for a loan um, that actually has a sub-report in it that generates all of the specimen-based stuff that appears on the loan form. Um, but again, it's very, very powerful. It can create all these multi-page reports where every page is different. This is my loan form that they regenerated in six. Um, so the first page looks like this and has all of your header stuff at the top and then some specimen based stuff and then how many lots and how many specimens were actually sent out and all of that sort of stuff. You can put hard coded text on like all of this sort of stuff is hard coded text. You can put graphics in. Um, you can also link to individual data elements within your, within your system. Then the second page obviously doesn't need all the header stuff on it but it is essentially much the same. And then the last, the last page is a specimen loan agreement that outlines what you can and can't do with our specimens. So you can really create these very, very complex multi-page um, reports for you know basically anything that you want to do in your collection and this is the interaction scenario with all of your interactions on the right on the left hand side here accessions permits loans gifts exchanges in and out borrows and information requests um, some of these are actually linked to physical preparations in your collection like loans and gifts are generated from catalogued material in your collection the exchanges is more a case of just saying I've got 50 of these and I want to exchange them. So they're not, it's not actually physically linked to specimen based stuff in your collection. Um, but essentially to create a loan, you would click on the loan item in the, on, the, on the left hand side. It comes up with a dialog box saying enter the catalog numbers that you want to loan. You can either do it with a barcode scanner or you can just type them in um, to, what, to whatever, whatever specimens it is that you want to loan. Once you've done that, it'll come up with a listing of all of the preparations that you have for those specimens and how many specimens there are. You can then decide how many of these things you want to loan out um, to that particular person. In a lot-based system, you may not be sending all of them. In a herbarium situation, most of those would just be one sheet. Um, and so you can just select all at the bottom and it will select all of them and you can loan them all out. Then once you've gone through that step, it then creates your loan form for you, ready to be, ready to be sent out. Who are you shipping it to? Who, the, who it was shipped by? the date that it was shipped on, the method it was shipped, how many packages, all of that sort of stuff is available on the form for you to use. And then once you've entered all of the information, you click this generate invoice on save button and save the record and it automatically generates that report from iReports um, with all of your loan information. <coughs>